Okay, this is section 4.1 in your textbooks. <coughs> we're looking at, at solving algebraic equations. So what I mean by that is we're, we're going to look to solve for the variable value, okay, given an equation. <coughs> so the first, uh, first little blurb here, would someone like to read? <coughs> yeah, thank you. Pep rallies are a great, a great way to build schools together by sharing on your favorite school team and clubs. Propose your student council raises $500 in the school spirit fundraising guide to buy school t-shirts to give away at a pep rally and puts you in charge of purchasing. How can you, how can your understanding of equations help you determine how many shirts you can buy? Okay, good. So we're going to use uh, what we've already learned about variables now where we let a, re a variable represent something. Uh, and create an equation and then use that equation to solve uh, for the unknown. So the first uh, part of the investigate says, how can you use a simple equation to solve a problem? So it says, Byron spent a total of $11 on two magazines. The cost of one magazine is $5. You can use an equation to find the cost of the other magazine. So if our magazine represents M plus our second magazine, which we know is $5, going to be equal to what? Yeah, Alvin? Eleven dollars. Good. Okay. Now, we need to try and solve for the variable m. So the first part says, choose a variable to represent the unknown. So we chose that to be m. Write an equation to represent this situation. So that's what we decided. Finally, it says, what value of the variable makes this equation true? Describe the math operations used to find the value. So <clears throat> some of you might know just by looking at it that the answer is 6, right? But we're going to get much more complex equations where you're not going to be able to just look at it and determine the answer, okay? So the way we go about doing that, finding the value of m, is we actually move the, the numbers away and keep the variable on the left-hand side. So what we've learned already when we move over an equal sign, or have we learned this? Do we know what happens? Have you guys heard this? Yeah, Tim? But it should become subjective. Right, so I talked about this in the first week, right? Yes. Okay, so there's, there's two ways you can think of this. Okay, you can think of it as changing signs when you move over an equal sign. That's the way I like to think of it. Or you can think of it, and they call it this in the textbook, opposite operations. Okay, so because this is plus 5, what you'd want to do is minus 5. And you do whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep the equality. Okay, so 5 minus 5. That becomes just M, and you're left with 6 on the other side, okay? So opposite operations means you're doing the opposite of what's on one side, you're doing it to both sides so that you cancel out on the left-hand side. Or, preferably, if you move over an equal sign, you're going to change the sign, okay? Any questions about that so far? All right. Describe the op math operations you used to find the value. Okay, the math operation we used was subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation. Next, it says Kelly spent a total of $10 on a pen and two mechanical pencils. The pen cost $4, and the pencils each cost the same amount. Choose a variable to represent the unknown. So we know the pen is $4, so we don't need anything for that. Uh, the two mechanical pencils, so we can call those P. So you can see it. Okay. Thanks. Just let me know. So P is the pencil, okay? Write an equation to represent this situation. So she spent a total of $10. So who can tell me the equation we would write? <coughs> One pen and two pencils. Christian in the back. Um, because one pen costs $4, we start off with four for the pen. Right. So four plus, because there's two um, pencils that are both equal, I do four plus two times um, the variable P. Right. That should, that should equal 10. Excellent. Perfect. Okay, that's what we need to do. Yeah, Adam. Should we have 4 plus 2P, or should we have 4 plus P plus P? 2P. Because you're going to combine like terms, right? So he just skipped a step. That's what I would prefer, right? So now next thing we're going to do is what, Tim? You bring them the 4 with the 10 making a subtraction. Okay. Now we have 2p is equal to 6. So what's p equal to? Uh, Justin right here that's yawning. Yeah. 3, good. So we found that by dividing both sides by 2. 
Any questions about that? Why I divided both sides by 2? Hey, Jay. Uh, when you're doing this, do you need to do subtraction before division? Or is it like yes, yes. <coughs> like, I wouldn't divide by 2 here, right? I'd have to divide everything by 2. You could, like, let's say we did that. We divided everything by 2 first, okay? You're going to get 2 plus P equals 5, right? See that? And so now P is going to be equal to 5 minus 2. P is equal to 3. So you get the same answer. It's just a lot more work, okay? So you really want to divide it as your last step, okay? So the, thing, the way I think of it is you want to move everything away from the variable. So the fur furthest things away from the variable, like the addition and subtractions, you're going to move them away first and then deal with the coefficient at the end. Okay, the coefficient again, of course, is that number two, right? Uh, so th finally, three, how can you use the mathematical <laughs> operations to solve equations? Okay, just exactly what we did. We use opposite operations. And explain how you can verify your answers. So we can verify our answers by going back to the original question and plugging in our values. That's how we verify. Okay, so if the first one here was $11, uh, for two different magazines, if we plug in 6 for M, are we going to get 11? Yes. So finally, a definition of mathematical statement that says two expressions are equal, and there's an example. That's an equation. Okay? Equation has the word or part of the word equal, so an equation should contain an equal sign. Okay? Example 1, solve equations involving adding and subtracting. So they're going to show us uh, three methods here. You can, by all means, read through inspection and balance method, but ultimately, you're going to use method three for grade 10, grade 11, grade 12, university, rest of your life. So we're going to focus on method three. All right, I'm not going to worry about these two methods. When you do the homework and it says use inspection or balance, you can just use uh, the opposite operation method. Okay. So you don't have to go through these. If you're having difficulty, you can come back to this example and look at them. But ultimately, you're going to have to use method three later on. You just can't spend this much time drawing blocks out, you can imagine, uh, in the later maths. Okay? So let's skip to method three. Here's our questions. X plus four is equal to 13. So opposite operations. You're going to subtract four from both sides. X is equal to nine. Another way, still the same method, opposite operations, but you're going to move the 4 over the equal sign and you get the same thing, right? Any questions there? Okay, let's look at the next one. X minus 8 equals 2. Alex? X equals 2 plus 8. Very good. So X is equal to 10. Okay, and this one here, uh, Matthew? Fidelity? Um, no, this is Matthew. Uh, you do uh, positive 4 plus, four plus negative 1. Excellent. So the negative 4 becomes positive, minus 1 is 3. Okay? I could have done negative 1 plus 4, it would have been the same thing, right? Any questions? Example two, solve each equation. So same idea. Tyler in the back. Uh, so 3y is going to divide 80 by y is 0. So <coughs> we're going to do 3y divided by 3 and 18 divided by 3. So y equals 6. Excellent. OK, Nicholas right here in the front. Excellent, good. So we're going to multiply the whole thing by 3, so every term by 3. So 3 times n over 3 is equal to negative 4 times 3. So this, these cross out. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we're left with n is equal to negative 12. Any questions there? That's the first time we saw division. Yes, Christian. Yeah, that's what we did. Wait, like, just instead of like having to multiply everything by three, can we just like, 
take out multiple reward, bring it over to the side and multiply? Yes. Steven? Yes, that's my question. Okay. Uh, negative V equals 9. Less than? Excellent. Any questions there? Okay. Example 3, we have another definition here on the left hand side. So a root, it's the value of a variable that makes an equation true. The same as the solution of an equation. So in other words, it's going to be the value of x, in this case, that makes this equation true. So when you solve for a root, you're, you're solving for the variable value. Okay, the variable value is the root, or the solution of the equation. Uh, Luca, in the back there, what do I do here? Excellent. So you did two steps in ones, but yeah, 5x is equal to 500 minus 25. So 5x is equal to 475. And then x is going to be equal to, I believe, 95? Yeah, it's right there too, right? Any questions there? Okay, there's another one here, use opposite operation, Con computer algebra system. We're not going to need that, okay? We don't need that for something so simple. A lot of work for what we just did, right? They're checking their answer too. So the way to check this is you would take the 95 and plug it in for X and see if you get 500. So 5 times 95 plus 25 should be 500, okay? Example four, modeling with equations. Student council raised 500 in school spirit fundraising drive. The council decides to use the funds to buy school t-shirts to give away at a pep rally. If the t-shirts cost $6 each, how many of the student council will buy? All right, so without looking at the answer there, Joseph. Where's Joseph? Both Josephs are gone? Oh. Oh, okay, Hugo. Uh, so what you're doing is uh, 500 divided by 6. And then you total the Okay, yeah, that's here. But how do you create the initial, the initial question says there's $6 t-shirts, right? So you want to do 6 times T, right? Because that'll be the cost of total t-shirts. $6, right, times however many t-shirts, that's going to be equal to 500. So oh. then you do t is equal to 500 divided by 6. Okay? You can't skip that part, okay? Because that's important when you're creating the equation. All right, Hugo? Good? Okay, key concepts. To solve an equation means to find the value of the variable that makes the statement true. This is also called finding the root of the equation. Find the variable value, you're finding the root. To solve a one-step equation, isolate the variable by forming the opposite operation or moving variables over the equal sign away from, sorry, not variables, moving constants. So in other words, numbers, constants over the equal sign away from the variable moving constants away over the equal sign, I'm going to put in here, plus changing sign, right? Changing the sign of the, of the constant and equal sign and away from the variable. So in a two-step equation, there's more than one term on one side. Isolate the variable term first by adding or subtracting, then divide by the coefficient of the variable. So we talked about that. You want to move everything away first that's farther away from the variable, and then the last step, you divide that coefficient away.
Okay. And finally, you can check by taking that value of x and going back to the original equation and plugging it in and make sure you get the equality. Okay, so that's what happens here. 9 is equal to 9. And making sure the left side equals the right side. Any questions? All right.